Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the role of corporate officers in a corporate structure. In a corporate stru structure, the people on the top are the shareholders. On the top of the pyramid scheme or on the top of the corporation are the owners, are the shareholders, the people that invested money in the company. Now their job, their main job, and we saw this in a separate recording when we looked at the role of the shareholders, is to vote the board of directors. They vote them. They hold election and they select people to run the company on their behalf. Now once this board of directors, so if we say first are the shareholders, second, in the second, in the second row comes the board of directors. Those are, as I mentioned, voted by the shareholders. The shareholders vote them. Then the board of directors, they below this three, we have this group called corporate officers. Then the corporate officers are either elected or appointed, usually appointed by the board of directors. So notice how it, how it works. The owners vote for this group, board of directors. The board of directors elect or appoint this corporate officers. And who are the corporate officers? The CEO of the company, the CFO, the CIO, chief information officer, chief operating officer, chief financial officer, chief executive officer, people on the top to run the companies. Those are the top, simply put, top management. The reason I'm giving you few titles, so you are comfortable. So the, the word corporate officer does not intimidate you. And this structure ensure a clear separation of roles, allowing for efficient governance and management of the corporation. So the shareholders are not are not running the company, although they are the owners, they elect someone and the people that they elect, those people are not agent of the company. The board of directors, they don't work for the company. They oversee the whole process. The corporate officers are the actual agent. So the shareholders exercise control through the board. So the shareholders, they can vote whoever they want to, including themselves, who in turn delegate the operational responsibility to the officers. And this is what we will be discussing in this session. What is the role of the officers? Create a hierarchy that supports both strategic oversight and effective daily operation. So the board of directors look at the big picture, oversees the whole company. They don't look at the day-to-day -day operation. They don't work, in quote, work day-to-day. -day. They, they are not agent of the company. The agent of the company are the CEO, the CFO, the CIO, the, C, the COO, and all upper level management who are appointed or selected or elected by the board of directors. This is what we will discuss in the session. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Officers of the corporation, they play a pivot role in what? In managing the operation, day-to-day -day operation. So it's very important to understand their rights, their duties, their obligation, and actual authority. What do they do? Well, they handle the, late, the daily management of the corporation. What is that daily management? Supervise employee, train employees, uh, sign contract, negotiate contract. Day-to-day -day operation, this include making decision and executive strategies in line with the board directives. Remember, the board of directors is above this group. Board of directors is above this group. They set the overall strategy and the officers will try to execute the strategies. So they run the day-to-day -day operation, implementing strategies and policies set by the board. Now, officers can be easily removed by the directors with, with or without cause. What's that? Why? It's, it's reflecting the need for the ability in managing the corporation, day-to-day -day operation. So if, if an officer is not doing a good job, they can be fired. They can be fired or let go for any reason. Now, obviously, they might have some legal, you know, legal claim, but nevertheless, they can let go. So officers held, held their position at the pleasure of the board of the board because they hire them and can be and can be removed by the board reflecting the board's ultimate control over the corporation management now a recent case that happened is the board of directors of you know i'm sure you heard of this company open ai open ai which is chat gpt they removed the ceo but the ceo was so powerful 
that upper level management revolted and they asked for the CEO to be reinstated. I'm just kind of give you an example. What, what are we talking about here? So, so generally speaking, the board of directors have the ultimate power, but in case of OpenAI, the CEO was very powerful because he was the founder, one of the founders of OpenAI, ChatGPT. Authority of the corporate officers. Remember, what I said is those are agents of the company. They, the role is corporate agent. They act on behalf of the company. They're responsible for its daily activities and they can bind the corporation to any contract they sign. Now, obviously they have actual authority and they have apparent authority. For example, this president is presumed to have authority to enter contract and make decision in the regular course of business. Because why? If I'm the president, I'm expected to be able to sign contract to negotiate payment, so on and so forth. The officers, they have the duty, fiduciary duty, and the corporation is supposed to reimburse them for any response, for any legal or financial responsibilities that they incur on behalf of the company. Fiduciary responsibilities, like directors, they must act in good faith with no conflict of interest with the organization, with due diligence, care, and skills of an ordinarily prudent person in a similar position. Simply put, they must prioritize the corporation interests over their interests or any other interests. They work for the company. Now, obviously, they will need to be reimbursed for any expenses and any judgment and litigation related to their role as a corporate officer. Similar to the directors. Think about it. The CEO is on the top. They're not the director, but close to it. Now, bear in mind that if they are sued, they can use the business judgment rule because no one can be 100% accurate. This principle also applies to officers, protecting them from liabilities for decision made in good faith for the corporation benefit. So when they make a business judgment, and we all hope that they make the right one, they start a new product, uh, they expand in a certain territory, they acquire another company. Well, that decision may turn out to be good or may ter they turn out to be a sour, like really a bad decision and could bring the company down. If they are sued, they can say, well, we did our best business judgment. We made our best judgment, giving the circumstances we were under. So they, that, that's a protection for them. Now, we have to keep in mind that it's not uncommon for officers to also serve as directors. So you can be an officer of the company, you can be a director, and obviously you could also be at the same time a shareholder. So you can own shares in the company, be a major shareholder, work for the company, and you wanna select yourself to be a director. You're pretty much involved everywhere in the company. And basically for small corporations, especially private one, yes, most likely the majority owners are also officers and directors of the company. Now, bear in mind, while officers can be shareholders, it's not a mandatory requirement so it's like because, you know, because you're a shareholder, you can be an officer. No, you may be a shareholder and you don't know anything about the business. You don't want to be an officer. This flexibility allows corporation to appoint officers based solely on their qualification and suitability for the role. So if you're a shareholder, you cannot impose yourself. Say, I want to run the company. You, you can't do that if you're not qualified, right? I mean, you can vote yourself to the board of directors, then if you are, if you have enough shares, if you control the board of directors, then you can control the company. Then you can, then if you control the company, then you know how to manage the company, right? But the, the, in the absence of that, just because you're, you're, you're a shareholder, it doesn't mean you can be an officer. So the shareholders are the owners of the corporation, but do not directly manage it. They, they, in some situation, they do. In large companies, they don't. They don't because they're so much disconnected from the corporation. If you own shares in publicly traded companies like Amazon, Apple, IBM, so on and so forth. So the primary role of a shareholder is to do what? Elect the board of directors. So again, let's let's show you the, the structure. Shareholders are on the top. This is one, two, board of directors, three, officers, corporate officers. One, two, three. So the shareholders are on the top, but they can vote to this group. This group, the board of directors, would elect the officers. Now, can someone with all three? Yes, you can be a shareholder on the board and a corporate officer. It's not, not uncommon. So, but your job as a shareholder is to vote. This, they generally don't have direct involvement in day-to-day -day operations, especially in large companies. This is the idea that you want to know. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. Who has the power to remove corporate officers? So who are the corporate officers? Once again, we're talking about the CEO, the CFO, senior executive, upper level management. Who has the right to remove them? 
can the shareholders do so? Can Oh, the shareholders are owners of the company. Yes, they are, but they cannot remove the corporate officers. They cannot. Can the board of directors remove them? Yes. Remember, the shareholders vote for this group, vote for the board of directors to run the company. This group elect or select or appoint the officers. And if they can select them and appoint them, they can fire them. Any senior executive? No, not any senior executive can fire a corporate officer. That's That will be a chaos. External auditors? Not at all. External auditors are simply external party to the company that their job is to just to check our books to make sure we are we are preparing our financial statements in accordance with generally accepted or whatever framework we are using, generally accepted accounting principles. So the answer is B, the board of directors has the right, has the power to do what? Remove corporate officers. Now, indirectly, the shareholders are doing it because the shareholders elect the board, but they don't act. They don't fire, hire anyone. That's their job is to elect this group of people. And this group of people, the board of directors, will run the company on their behalf. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional resources that's going to do what? Help you prepare for your CPA exam, accounting courses, whatever certification you are studying for. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.